Hi there guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Join me once again in my Mark 7 Golf R to talk a little bit around VW and Ford and just to kind of discuss, well, where they're kind of at at the end of 2020 and, yeah, where we kind of might want them to be, being, you know, I'm a bit of an enthusiast with them and, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about that and discuss that with you guys. So, yeah, let's get straight into this one. So, yes, welcome back to another video. I hope you are all well. And, um, essentially, yesterday, <laughs> on a... A casual run i popped into a four dealer just around the outside and i also went to a um, vw dealer as well and i'll put images up as i'm kind of speaking as well of kind of what i saw and yeah and to kind of talk you through them as well so first up i went to ford now i'm a i'm a huge fast ford fan i absolutely love them i've i've owned a ford fiesta st i had that for four years before this car um I still, yeah, I still love it today. It's, it's just such a fun, entertaining car. It, it suited my needs at the time as well. Um, 40,000 miles, loved it to bits. And going back to Ford, you know, I serviced the car there and stuff like that. And I was like, what have they, what have they actually got on their forecourt? How much, how much money are they going to charge for this kind of, these kind of cars? Because the used market is in a, is in a bit of a strange place. I actually think it's, a strong place to be because new cars are the cars which are which well people are finding it quite difficult to to buy and um essentially first of all i saw a uh, five litre ford mustang so that's <laughs> right up my street um that particular car actually was up for about twenty seven thousand pounds it done thirty thousand miles um and conveniently because of our strange tax laws this is one thing to mention um a five litre mustang naturally aspirated car only cost £150 a year to tax because we had this strange thing in the UK where if your car is less than £40,000, which the Mustang is, and yeah, that was basically it. If it was less than £40,000 and it was um, art, it was made after, I think it's April 2017, similar to this car, um, yeah, you get taxed that amount. If the car is more than £40,000, you then get an extra £310 a year to tax. Now, if you want a car for a long period of time, that's actually quite a lot of money. And actually, if you wanted a Mustang, which was a year older, you're paying about £550 a year tax. Um, so it's quite incredible, really, just on the tax side of things, of how much these things cost. Anyway, I thought that car was great. Love a five-litre Mustang. Checking around as well from other cars that they kind of had, I kind of glossed past the Ford Puma. It really wasn't really top of my, <laughs> top of my wish list, I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, some cool Fiestas. Nice seeing them, some Focus STs and stuff. But I came across a Mark 8 Fiesta ST. And I was like, oh, 69 plate, looks quite cool, looks quite fancy. It was up for nearly £19,000. Um, and I don't know about you, I, I think that's a lot of money for a year-old car, which, um, yeah, I mean, bear in mind, we are a few weeks away from 2021. Um, a car that, again, I always talk about this, the intended audience of a specific car can they really afford that type of car? Um, you know, I was fortunate enough at 22 to be able to to get a Fiesta ST. Um, you know, it was affordable. It worked out quite well for me. And um, yeah, and then I came across and sold it and replaced it with a Golf R. But um, I look at other people who might have wanted to be in the same position that I am. And I know you can get cheap finance rates and stuff, but I mean... It's, it's, it's an expensive car for what it is. It's not like it's a brand spanking new car, which is what I was fortunate enough to do when I picked up my Fiesta. Um, so that was a bit strained pricing wise. And it just showed to me that the used car market is strong. Uh, main dealers obviously put on a bit of a premium and then they'll potentially give you some leeway of a discount and make you think that you've got a fantastic deal when really it's actually quite an expensive car. Um, what else did I kind of see at Ford? There wasn't much else that kind of took my fancy. I didn't see any Mark III Focus RSs. Um, I think those are commanding really strong money. And they're fantastically fun cars. But um, my honest advice to you, if you want a fun, fast Ford, I would say get a car like I did. I, I, I mean, even now, if I own that today, I'd still enjoy it. Um, 2013 Fiesta ST, get an ST2 or something. Job done. I mean, I, I had a little look on Auto Trader and stuff. You can get them for around six and a half to seven thousand pounds. What a bargain. What a bargain. That is what I would be doing if I could roll back the years and be 22 again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's my advice on Ford. And I guess I just find it a little bit confusing where they're going. They're, they're trying to implement a bit of hybrid technology in some of their Mark 8 Fiestas. Um, 
I've honestly, I just, I never massively trust Ford on the real technical stuff like that. If that makes sense, it takes so much R and D to get all this stuff in. And for me, Ford has always been kind of like fun, affordable, and cheap. That that is generally it. Um, but not you know so so cheap. But you know it's it's an affordable car to live with. It's not something really you you want when you've got some you're packing a hybrid system and stuff like that. So that that's just my initial opinion on that side of things. And they released something like the the Ford Mustang Mac E um, or the Mac One. And Richard Hammond actually did uh, a really cool um, video on it. And it's got a five litre V8. <laughs> and I was like, why is that car being released in Europe at this time? You know, I, th I think Ford probably missed the boat actually not bringing the Mustang to the UK earlier. Because um, there's so many fast Ford fans here. It would have et them up all day long. But in the world we're in today, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to have one of the uh, you know a five litre mustang but i don't really care what it is i don't really care if it's a 2020 model or if it's a 2017 model you know um you just want that rear wheel drive manual five litre naturally aspirated engine that's the cool thing so i i just struggle to understand where ford are going obviously they're not making the mark four focus rs the top of the range of the hatch world is the st and yeah i find it a little bit I just I just find it strange and it's a shame because I would have brought a lot more content with you guys on the channel because um, yeah I enjoyed my fast forward stuff um, but there's just not really that much to shout about it's not a brand that you want to um, yeah that I'm sort of like jumping up and down for basically which is a shame I think I admire their old their their older car in the last decade kind of thing you know the Fiesta ST the Mark 7 and the Focus RS the Mark 3 great cars um, yeah that's kind of where I'm at with Ford and I don't really know where their sort of future is I don't, I don't have that vision in my head so that's that's one thing I just wanted to talk about Ford now <laughs> my plan was actually to go to Porsche as well because I do a lot of um, Porsche content but I'll save that to another day and um, yeah on my travels I went to VW big part of the channel I do so much content on it don't I and um, <laughs> and I was like what have they got I'm, uh, am I expecting to see a whole host of ID3s and electric cars and you know what have they got on stock and the first car I saw was probably almost certainly a manager owned because that's what it's work is was a T-Rock R in grey similar grey to this car and I just thought awesome that's what struck my attention I was like that's a cool car that is what I you know I'd love to have because it's a great car you know pra more than practical enough plenty fast probably a bit of a laugh to drive um, not so heavy that you know you're driving a massive SUV they hold their money well because mini, you know, half house SUVs are just the thing. Everyone wants them, and you can't, you know, you can't deny the demand from the people at the end of the day, and that's always a good thing to be in. So it's, it's you know, your money's kind of safe a little bit, assuming you get one at the right price. So that took my fancy. As I walked on, I saw um, some Mark Eight Golfs. Really don't like the standard look of the Mark Eight Golf. I mean, it looks really dull as anything. I saw a, a GTD as well. I had a little look around that. And I was like, it's a little bit more stylish, but nothing really, you know, maybe that's just the golf way. But yeah, nothing to massively shout about. Checking through further and um, yeah, just wandering around, checking out some more of the cars. I came across a, what looked like a very base spec ID3 and it had like very base spec wheels. Yeah, it didn't look like it had much on it. Probably a car maybe around the low 30s, 30 to 35 grand, that kind of money. Um, maybe even, you know, I, I know they start at just under £30,000. Um, first of all, it looked actually quite big, maybe because it's quite tall. Um, but second of all, it was the only one there, and it wasn't really, they weren't really shouting about it, put it that way. They weren't really shouting about what I've seen on the marketing side of Ford, which is all about that that push to electric, you know, that, that new generation. This R badge that you see in this Golf R is going to become a, is going to be signified as the top of their electric range. That's what I feel their vision's going to be. And walking through, um, yeah, just a couple of standard Golfs, still kind of taken away by that T-Rock R. Saw a nice Golf R Estate. That was cool in 7.5 form. Um, but before that, I saw um, a GTI. Again, they still look great in 7.5, guys. Um, I think the R was up for around twenty seven, twenty eight thousand pounds. The estate. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but obviously they've got to shift these cars. This is just where we're at. So that was it. I, I went through and I saw a couple of, you know, I went through two dealerships that I, of cars that I enjoy and I like, and I like doing content on them. And I like talking about the future of them, 
and you know where are they going to be in as time goes on now i came out of that and i sort of said to myself from a real world person point of view i don't i don't really ever want to buy you know like a daily car used or new just ever it is really it's a really weird feeling it's like just from a financial point of view unless you're like fortunate enough to have you know enough money to take the depreciation hits um the markup that dealers have is very very high um the the vision of where these cars are going to be in the future is completely unpredictable the unpredictability of obviously coronavirus is you know knows no bounds um so it's very hard to want to put your money into something like that you know for example if i was to sell this golf bar you know there'd be a margin difference wouldn't there you know the dealer would want to make their profit so i would lose out on that and then when i come to buy my car someone would want to make their margin on it and i'd lose out on that so you're just throwing away money for no reason so it's good news for the golf bar because it just show, shows why um why i kind of love it so much um, and I guess from my point of view, and maybe from a lot of people's point of view as well, you might be doing a lot less miles. You know, I'm I'm well under miled from what I um what I w had predicted to be doing at this stage, um in the car's life cycle, um which is a shame. It'll be interesting to know what the future holds as we come into sort of start of next year in like the car market. But um one advice that I'd give to you is kind of hold on to what you have, is um is the best advice I can kind of say. But looking through these two manufacturers. Um, from what they were and what they are now maybe because I've done more content on the VW I get an idea where they're heading and that they have the money to back up their vision as well Ford I don't really know I don't really know you know all I see if you're not from the UK all you'll see is Ford Fiestas everywhere everywhere <laughs> um, those Mark 7s sold it so so well and it helped the fact that there's somewhere zero tax or £20 a year tax which is nothing um, and you know for a car that just does your daily duties your boring duties um, what more would you want but on the exciting front not quite seeing that whereas clearly with the VW you got the Club Sport the new GTI you got the new R um, you got like Artyon R you got the T-Rock R you got the Tiguan R you got the um, Touareg R you, you got it all you got it all you, you've got your your cake and your icing you've got everything to it you can have your fun and then you can have your normal practicality and that's kind of why i love the brand and don't get me wrong i still love fast forwards but i don't necessarily understand their purpose as much as i once did but listen thanks so much for watching let me know your thoughts in the comments where you think ford and vw are kind of heading really interested to know your thoughts um i do plan to have a, a, a casual run up to um porsche and just to check out seeing the cars that um they have and to talk to you about that on the channel as well because i do a lot of content on them but i think when you're up close and personal and you're sort of looking at the cars and you're looking what they're up for it just gives you that little bit of per different of a perception than potentially just reading a blog or an article or um, you know taking the advice from some of you guys because you know you you are so helpful to the channel. But sometimes you got to go up and yeah and see what it's all about for yourself. But listen, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic um, sort of end to the year. Um, challenging times, but you know we'll all get through it at the end of the day. That's that's the main thing. You just got to kind of keep going. And hopefully these videos are helping. But listen, um, give this video a like and share, subscribe. That really does help. It really does help the smaller channels such as mine. Um, you know, I'm heading up to 1,500 subscribers, which I'm massively grateful for. Um, but yeah, to kind of improve and increase the community, um, that's the best way to do it, basically. It really, really does help. And it's just a, a simple act. Particularly if you got this far into the video, I'd like to think that you have enjoyed it. But um, listen, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and um, rest of your week. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.